Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just gonna be chatting with you guys a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to relate with me. So today's topic will be fuck boys. So I've had plenty of experience with fuck boys, unfortunately. So my first boyfriend, like my first real boyfriend, I'm not gonna be using any names today because that ain't right. So I'll just switch the names if I have to use the name. So when I was in high school, like before then, like I had had like boyfriends, but they weren't really boyfriends. They were more like, oh, I think you're cute. Like I was too young to even have a boyfriend. So the summer before my freshman year in 2010, in August, I was in the, if you hear any cars in the background, please excuse it. Like, I have a big road behind my house and it's kind of hard for me to like block out those sounds until I get a better camera and stuff. But anyway, in August of 2010, I met my first real boyfriend. We're gonna say his name was Chad. So I met Chad and for a long time it went great. Well, Chad was a Gemini. And I have a horrible track record with Geminis now. I mean, all things put aside, my current boyfriend's a Gemini and I wouldn't change him for anything, but the other Geminis I've ever been associated with have just not been good for me. They've just not ended well. Someone asked me to talk about fuck boys, so here we are. And I'm still not putting any makeup on my face. You're probably wondering what moisturizer I just used. It's the Dr. Jart Water Drop. I used to work at Sephora, just FYI. It was only seasonal as a cashier, but I loved working there. It was the best experience of my life. But I got this as one of my like 100 point perks or something like that. And this is really cool. Like, let me show you. When I rub it in, like, you see the little water droplets? Like literally water droplets come out. I have dry skin and I really like the way that it makes my skin feel. So, a plus Dr. Jart on that. So anyway, let's go back to talking about Chad. So for the longest time, Chad was amazing. Like we had a good relationship. I was happy. Like I connected with his family a lot. Like it was good. I had always had problems with this girl, Amanda. Let's just call her Amanda. She was in my Spanish class my freshman year and I could just tell that she was just bad news. Not my type of person to hang out with. So I straight up told Chad that I didn't care who he hung out with, but he was not allowed to hang out with her. We're at lunch and I'm in line waiting for my food and my boyfriend comes up behind me, Chad, and he has Amanda with him. And I'm just like, oh, that's great. You know, the one person I told you not to hang out with, you decide that you want to do that. So, hey, you know, whatever. Just completely ignore my feelings and how I feel about it. So anyway, I went with the flow just to like put on a front. He's like, Amanda, by the way, this is my girlfriend, Megan. And I was like, oh, hi, Amanda, nice to meet you. And later on that day, like when we were hanging out after school, me and Chad, like I told him, I was like, I told you like of all the people in this school, like, I'm pretty sure our student body was at least 400 people. At least. The one person I told you not to talk to, you decide you want to be friend. Bet. So, one thing led to another, and we ended up breaking up. Like, we had been rocky for a little while after he introduced Amanda. It just went downhill from there, honestly. I just used Glamouflage from Hard Candy in the shade Ultra Light because, you know, pasty over here. A week after we broke up, I was hearing rumors that him and her were dating. I was like, oh, that's great. So the last straw was when I heard about it in chemistry class and I had just heard enough of it. So I stormed out of class to hear it from the source and the teacher called security on me because I left class without permission. So then we had this stupid ass mediation 
and it got us nowhere. I had to have an, a, a protection order put against me. Well, not against me, but like for me. Like every time I went to use the bathroom, like I had to have a freaking escort with me. Like so, like I had to have an escort with me just in case, like. Amanda decided she wanted to jump me in the hallway because that's the type of person she was. Later on, I was dating my second boyfriend. I reunited back up with Chad. The thing with that was like, I wanted to give Chad, you know, a second chance because I still cared about him. Like, even though like he had already had like a child with Amanda and stuff, like he was my first love. Like, I really thought that it was going to be something that could last. Okay, it looks like someone punched me in my eye. Like, it literally, it looks like I have a bruise. What am I doing with my life? Why would I ever put these colors together? This just was not a good idea. Let me zoom you in. It legit looks like someone punched me in my eye. So anyway, I tried to give Chad, you know, a second chance. And soon after that, I regretted it because I had dated Chad for almost three years. So I knew what his arms looked like, what like, I knew what he looked like. So I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and the girl he's with now, I believe they're still together. I don't talk to him anymore. But the girl that he's with now posted, like her and I were friends, like we played sports together and stuff. So. I followed her on Instagram and she posted a screenshot of a text message and it was like some like lovey-dovey like contact name and it was Chad's wrist and his hand holding like Victoria's Secret stuff and I was like oh okay bet so I screenshotted it and I sent it to Chad and I was like oh so you're talking to her too? That's cute. Like, thanks for just, you know, treating me like crap again. And he was like, oh, no, nah, no, nah, you're funny. You have jokes, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I'm not stupid. I know that's your wrist. We dated for three years. Like, I know your wrist when I see it and you're not gonna make me look like an idiot. So that was the end of that. Then I met the biggest fuck boy of all. I went to school with him. And let me just tell you, when he was in school, I didn't really talk to him much because he was Chad's best friend. Like, I mean, we would like see each other in passing and like we would hang out once in a while when I was with Chad and Chad wanted to hang out with him. So like, we were acquaintances. And then when I started to get back in with Chad again, um, they were obviously still close, so like we were all hanging out together. Well, I had always found, what are we gonna call him? I had always found Robert cute. Okay, so I ran out of space on my card, so I had to delete some stuff. So I honestly don't even remember what I was saying. So there's that. That's fun. Talking about meeting Robert. So Robert ended up being the biggest fuckboy of my life. I will never again let someone treat me the way Robert did. And I was blind to the fact that he was abusing me. Note to you all, do not ever let your significant other treat you like any less of a human being just because you love them. They're always gonna find some reason to validate it and it's not a validating reason. Don't listen to it. They're being sociopaths, point blank, period. And that's what fuckboys are, sociopaths. They don't care who they hurt in the process of doing what they want to do. They don't care. They do whatever they want and they will push past whoever disagrees with them. Lesson number two, do not let a fuckboy dictate your life. Do not let a man or woman, whatever your preference, do not let your significant other try to tell you how to live your life. Do not let them try to make consequences for you. 
as long as you're not cheating on them and you're treating them the way they want to be treated, they have nothing to say about what you do in your spare time. As long as you're not hurting yourself or others, it's honestly, they are not allowed to tell you what you can and can't do. Do not be naive and stupid like I was and let a man or a woman control your life. Seriously, like just don't because I made that mistake and it's changed my life forever. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do a smoky eye. I got a pretty good transition going here. So I think I'm feeling a black smoky eye, even though it's a Wednesday, I mean, why not? Who says you can't wear a smoky eye on a fucking Wednesday during the day? By the way, the palette I'm using is the Modern Renaissance palette. And I used Golden Ochre, Warm Taupe, temp Tempera, Tempera, however the hell you pronounce that. And I'm also using the Smashbox Masterclass 2 palette. And I used Nectar and Pebble. So that's what I've used so far. I'm going to put a little bit more of Nectar in this upper crease. Let me know if you want more videos like this where I just sit here and talk. I think I'm going to switch it up a little bit with this smoky eye. On Wednesdays, we do smoky eyes. There's not a day of the week that you can't have a smoky eye. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The black shadow that I'm using has little like flecks of glitter in it. It's called Black Top. It's out of the Masterclass palette by Smashbox. This Stila uh, Magnificent Metal Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. The Dofa applicator like sucks up color, which is kind of annoying. I'm gonna take this. over the inner corner. I don't know if you could say that they're holographic, but I would say that they're definitely iridescent. I honestly don't know the difference between iridescent and holographic. <laughs> right now I'm taking the Ulta Beauty Micro Felt Tip Liner in black. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or if it's just the product, but it skips a little bit, which is, you know, super frustrating when you're trying to make a nice wing. I don't know if it's user error or if it's just the product itself. So I got this Marc Jacobs mascara in one of my 100 point perks from Sephora and I love this mascara. It bands my lashes out and I have really stubby lashes. I mean, obviously a look like this calls for falsies, at least in my opinion. I don't ever really wear makeup like this, like super dramatic makeup without false lashes. I just feel like a look is incomplete without them because who doesn't like some false lashes? These lashes are Vegas Nay and Eyelure collaboration. And I've purchased these lashes before and I love them. Love, love, love them. They're um, in grand glamour and they are pretty dramatic. So if you're looking for something natural, these are not the lashes to go. The band is a little thicker than some lashes you might be used to. But I honestly like that because I feel like when I put the glue on them and I put them to my eye, they're a little more secure. Don't mind me, I'm just picking the glue off of them because I've used them a couple times already. And I believe they're like seven or $10. And for lashes like these, you can't beat that. Like they literally feel like mink lashes. They're so pretty. I'm just using my Duo Lash Adhesive. And I'm just putting it directly on the lash band and then I'm gonna set it on the table so it can get tacky a little bit. 
a lot of people make the mistake of putting the lash glue on and then wanting to put the eyelash directly to their eye. And it's like, okay, well, when you were little and you used a bottle of Elmer's glue, I mean, obviously not the, this is Elmer's glue, but when you were little and you used Elmer's glue, if it was wet and you stuck it to the paper, it slid around, right? If you do that with your eyelashes, it's going to do the same thing, which is obviously counterproductive. You want them to stick, not slide around. While those are drying, I'm going to prep my face a little bit. I've obviously already moisturized. I've already shown you the Dr. Jart water drop. Now I'm using the L'Oreal Magic Lumi. It's kind of hard to read because it's reflecting the light. But the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Light Infusing Primer because your girl got some dry skin and where I live it's fall. So autumn, whatever you want to call it, fall, autumn. But my skin is super dry in the cooler months. I'm going to blow on it a little bit more. Just make sure it's dry enough and it's not slipping all over my eye. I'm going to look down in my mirror and I'm going to set that outer corner down. The inner corner is still up. So I'm going to take tweezers, which I do not recommend tweezers. I recommend one of these things. I recommend one of those to people who don't apply lashes, to people who are beginners, to people who have super sensitive eyes, who people... I do not recommend tweezers to anybody, honestly, because it's dangerous. So I'm going to be taking my Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth. It has SPF 18 in it, and then also my Too Faced Born This Way. My Too Faced is in Snow, and my Fit Me is in 115 Ivory, which this is pretty dark for ivory, like it's coming up more yellow on the viewfinder, but it's more pink in person and it's pretty damn dark for ivory in my opinion. I feel the same way with my Too Faced, I think that they're both off a little bit, that's why I mix them, plus I love the formula that they give me when I mix them together, so I'm just going to put them on the back of my hand. The only thing I don't like about these Fit Me foundations is they don't have a pump it's just this messy like twist top and this is what it looks like on my hand it's really runny as you can tell but you see the color difference the darker one is ivory ivory there's no way that that's ivory do you see how pink it is compared to the Too Faced one I hope you can see that so I just mixed it on the back of my hand. I'm gonna move my hair out of the way. And I'm just gonna buff this into my skin. And I only used one pump of the Born This Way and one drop of the Fit Me. So, and I like, don't have any left on the back of my hand and it covered my whole face so I mean it goes pretty far especially when you mix them like that the coverage is probably medium I've never tried to build it because I don't really need the extra coverage I mean I have pretty nice skin knock on wood um, but you can still see like I have a few bumps on my chin I have freckles like across my nose like Lots of freckles over here, and it doesn't cover like my freckles, which I love my freckles, so I don't really want them covered. Does anyone else have like deep laugh lines? My foundation loves to settle in my laugh lines. I'm only 21 years old. <laughs> I shouldn't have wrinkles, at least not yet. Next, I'm going to be using the Sephora brand retractable brow pencil, waterproof in 08 chocolate brown. So how I do my brows is I outline the outline that I want and then I take the pencil and I draw like little like hair strokes in the front and then I fill in the rest of my brow.
And then I take, it's not really a spoolie, honestly. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. It's like a little comb, kind of. And I just like comb through it a little bit. So I already got my Kat Von D translucent powder, which I love this powder, but I really hate its packaging. Way too much powder comes out and I have to smack it all back into the jar so that I don't get a freaking whole big wad of it. And then most of the time it's still too much. Like there's just way too much. Way too much comes out at a time. I usually just take it out of the lid. With this I usually use my beauty blender, but I don't know where it is right now. So I'm just gonna pat it in with my finger. And I'm gonna make sure I get up in this inner corner because of the smoky eye. We want the inner corner to be bright. And a lot of times, even just your pigmentation there can be dark. And then I'm gonna take this like fluffy angled brush and I'm gonna get some of this powder on my brush. Make sure there are no creases in it. I'm gonna pat over it again before I set it. And then I'm gonna set it. Now I'm just gonna set the rest of my face. Now it's time to bronze. So I'm gonna use my Hula Bronzer from Benefit. I'm just gonna start warming up my face. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of that on the same brush and go down the sides of my nose. Now I'm just gonna take this brush that I was blending all of my eyeshadow out with. And I'm gonna take pebble on it, just the tiniest bit, and run that underneath my eye. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna take Nylon by MAC, which is one of my favorite shades by them, honestly. And I'm gonna take it, I don't really have a clean flat brush right now, so I'm gonna take it on this angled brush, and I'm just gonna take it flat along my brow. I'm going to take a mixture of Flush and Carnation from the Master Class palette. I'm just going to blush up my cheeks a little bit. I'm going to take this shade, which I think is Hey. I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be extremely wrong. But I'm going to take a mixture of Hey, I think that's what it's called, and Nylon. Highlight my cheekbones. I'm taking my NYX lip liner in natural, which I obviously love. Look how small it is. I'm just gonna line my lips real fast. And I'm just filling them in a little bit. And then I'm taking this poor, poor MAC lipstick. I mean, look at this thing. Look at it. Just, just, just take a peek at how destroyed this thing is. It makes me sad because I love this color and I don't know how it got this way. And recently I've been using a brush on it, but I can't find the brush. So I'm just going to have to be really gentle with it. But this is the MAC lipstick in Redhead. Breaking even more. Here's my finished look. I hope you like it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little chat chat get ready with me. If you want to see more videos like this by me, please give me a thumbs up. Please do not forget to comment, rate, subscribe. All of my social medias are down in the description box below. So I will see you next time and have a great day. Bye guys.
You know what I forgot? I was talking about it and talking about it, and I forgot to set my brows. A squeaky ass chair.